joining us today. I'm Tracy. I'm the project coordinator at CSHA, and I am pleased to be moderating this session. Um, it's the Perspectives from Youth Action Board a Quality Improvement Project. Um, it's an amazing workshop, and we have some amazing presenters here with us today. Uh, but before I introduce them, I do want to put in some couple reminders uh, for everyone. Just want to let everyone know that there's the chat and there's the Q&A tab on the right-hand side of your screen. So at any point, you know, you want to chime in. Um, tell us your thoughts, your opinions, ask us any questions, please feel free to do so um, in those tabs and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, and also I will be linking in the chat a survey link where you can fill out and then I believe that's where you will get your code for a chance to win uh, one of our raffles, which we have amazing prizes for. But I will do, um, I will send the link again at the end of the workshop as well, just to keep everyone in the loop and also for anyone who will be joining us later. But in that, from that point, I want to uh, introduce our amazing presenters. First off, we have Adrian. Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Adrian Lazaro. I'm a project co-director in the REACH lab at Stanford University School of Medicine. Super excited to be here. Uh, so I'll pass it off to you, Juanita. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Juanita. I'm a research coordinator or research assistant. I work with these two lovely women um, in the REACH lab, and we work on many different projects. So I'm excited to be here with you guys as well. And I'm going to pass it on to Marcia. Hi, everybody. My name is Marcia Soria. I am the Director of Positive Youth um, Development. I'm also the Public Health Specialist for the lab. I'm um, so delighted that you're here to join us um, at our workshop. Now, we'll pass it on to Adrian. Yes. All right. So let me get my screen share set up. And let's see. I would appreciate it in the chat uh, if you someone would let me know if it's visible. Are we seeing the, the slides? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we can't see it. Not yet. Um, okay, I'm setting it up, and right now it's not. Any advice, Tracy? I'm going to screen. I'm clicking on the one I'm trying to share. Did you open it in a different window? Yes. Oh, that is weird. Okay, let me ask um, tech support. Apologies, folks. So, yeah, thanks for answering in the chat. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that you, Marcel? Yes. Sorry. Okay. So, oh. Marcel is here. Hopefully, he can help us troubleshoot. Adrian, if you are able to click on screen, share screen, and then you would click on the window tab. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing that shows up is entire screen, and then you should check, click on the window, and then do you see? Are you sharing PowerPoint or are you sharing? No, it's a, a Chrome, a Chrome window, but so it's Canva. Click the Chrome tab option then and see if that doesn't show up there. Okay, let's see here. Um, the top Chrome tab. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're seeing it now. Okay, but are you seeing the? We're seeing, yeah, we're seeing the presenter view. The presenter view. Okay, perfect. Yay. Uh, wait, I think it looks like the. You well, can see can the see, notes on the side too. Yeah, we can see the notes. Mm -hmm. So maybe not this one. Okay, let me try that again and see if I can do. Um, I think I'll just do the regular view. 
gonna try this one more time, folks. Thank you. Um, okay. I'll try this again. Great. It's showing up. Okay. Thank you so much. Please, thank you. All right. So uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience. I appreciate it. Um, such is the, the life of folks living in a virtual world, right? Um, so a little bit of background about who we are. We're here representing the REACH Lab, which stands for Research and Education to Empower Adolescent and Young Adults to Choose Health. Um, our PI, or our principal investigator, is Dr. Bonnie Halpern Felscher, who's a professor of pediatrics um, at Stanford University School of Medicine, and we are within the Division of Adolescent Medicine. Um, so the mission of our lab is, as the name suggests, is to empower and promote adolescent and young adult health through collaborative research, education, and policy. So here's our core team. Uh, we do work with other folks and we have an uh, extensive network, uh, particularly of educators, including folks at school-based health centers um, who collaborate with us. Um, but this is our core group and you can see uh, we're a pretty well-rounded group and we have a lot of different um, uh, professional interests and, and skills. So we are just the three of us here presenting to you today. So um, before we get started with our presentation, um, it would, we think it's important to kind of talk about why do we have a youth action board? And you might notice that uh, our, the letter A stands for something a little bit different uh, in our group, and it's often called a youth advisory board. And although our board does advise us quite a bit, um, we refer to this group as the youth action board um, because they do take a lot of action and um, put, put work behind their their um, interests and their intentions, and so we have a nice collaboration with them. Um, and so part of the reason we have a youth action board is to elevate youth voice, to strengthen substance use prevention tools for youth, and to expand substance use prevention research. Okay, and I think we have our first poll question. Okay, poll question. Do you have a YAV at your site? And then just a heads up for our presenters, but I just want to make sure you know that we have, because of the slight delay or the slight lag, it's going to take us some time before we get everyone's responses. So I'm just waiting on that. Thank you. So we have 14 votes in right now and 35.7% said yes, we do have a YAB at our site and then 64.3% said no. So I'd like to introduce to you our, our Youth Action Board. Um, as you can see, they are a diverse group of young people. Uh, we have a lot of um, youth that um, identified as female. We have a lot of 11th graders. We have um, a large percentage of youth that are youth of color. And the majority of the youth live in California. We do have two youth that live out of state. One is in North Carolina and another one is in Maryland. Next slide, please. 
So when a youth applies to the Youth Action Board, they get to select the committees that they would like to join. And so these are some of the committees that um, we have currently. So we have a so we have education curriculum, we have communications, and we have um, policy, and then we have research. And so for education and curriculum, basically, um, they're involved in giving us um, advice on our curriculum, also developing content, which you'll see in, in a few minutes. Uh, and they love doing educational presentations, so they like doing conferences and anything that has to do with peer-to-peer -peer, um, education. So that's something that they really enjoy. Um, for communications, most of the communications that happens is through um, the social media that they utilize, which is um, Instagram. And it's a way for them to be able to engage with other youth on a regular basis. And also they create um, a lot of the flyers that we have for webinars and other things. And with the policy, it's um, learning about how to be um, an advocate and learning about how to create emails, how to do public speaking, and all of this is in collaboration and with support from our team. And then finally, with the, the research committee, so historically they've been um, pilot testing surveys for us, but um, more recently, given that we um, were awarded a pilot grant, they are also assisting with uh, research in terms of qualitative and um, quantitative survey development, analysis, and also helping with recruitment and outreach materials. Next slide, please. So our YAB was established in January of 2020, so right before the pandemic. So we actually did get to meet in person. And then um, the pandemic hit, and so we've been meeting on Zoom ever since. Um, and so this is a, a small group, and we've grown quite a bit since then. Next slide, please. So what I thought I'd do is share some of the highlights that they've done since we've been established. And so you get to see a little bit of what it's like to be in YAB. Next slide, please. So here is um, just a little uh, introduction of their uh, YAB Instagram. So the way this Instagram was established was that we were talking about the pandemic and all the things that were happening and we were talking about well, what are some ways that we can reach out to to youth, other youth, how to help them with vaping, preventing vaping and things like that. And so they um, suggested on starting an Instagram. And so this one here is one of the kind of the regular features of the uh, Instagram. So on Thursday, there's Trivia Thursday. So it's a based on a game and it's it's um, not only is it put in the regular post, but it's also done in stories. And um, so on tomorrow is Wednesday. So they'll have a, a, a wellness Wednesday. So it, it may be on meditation, it might be on yoga, anything that has to do with wellness. Uh, one of the things that I've told them um, in in terms of followers and all that, is that uh, recently actually we had uh, one of the posts was um, was borrowed by another agency and then they tagged the app and all that. And that I think is really important because uh, one of the youth said to me that it's um, really important for youth to feel that what they're doing um, means a lot. They like to see something come out of what they do. And so that's a, a great example of a way that um, they can see that all the work that they're doing is um, is kind of paying off in, uh, in some ways, that other people are, are getting their messages as well. So that's really nice. Uh, next slide, please. So this was one of the very first webinars that um, the GAB created um, that has to do with um, coping and during the pandemic. And so this uh, fire that you see here, it was created by one of actually two of the gabbers um so they created the fly the, the flyer for this uh, webinar and then and the next slide please it is a more recent uh webinar that they did just um, a couple of months ago that had to do with vapor related trash so this was a project that they wanted to do in terms of what is the the concentration of the trash in their communities so not only did they go to their schools, they went to their um, the, the playgrounds or the library, wherever it was easy for them to do this project, given that it was during the, the pandemic. And so one of the YAP also created this um, amazing flyer. Um, it was um, 
well received and um, it was another way of reaching out to other young people. Next slide, please. This is a, a new uh, project that the YAB is doing, and this is um, called YAB Corner. And so this will eventually be uh, in part living in one of our websites in the, um, the different toolkits that we have. And the idea for this was, uh, so we, when we meet on our regular Saturday meetings, we have uh, what we call a YAB corner and basically what we do or have been kind of talk about how are you and what's going on in school and what's going on with your friends and what are your peers into. So what that kind of sort of developed this idea of, well, there, let's communicate in other ways. So what this is um, going to be is a, a way of, of communicating that would include blogging, this will include videos that they've created, this will include podcasts, all depends on what it is that they are interested in doing in terms of reaching out to, um, to their um, peers. So we're really excited to be um, working on this. It's just started over the summer and um, we hope to get this um, rolling very soon. Next slide, please. Also over the summer, we were working on a Healthy Futures uh, curriculum, which is a curriculum for youth that have been um, caught um, being on campus or for youth that are interested in quitting. And so one of the youth uh, focused on Asian American and health. And so this is um, something that um, she created that uh, we're going to be implementing in our curriculum. So we're excited about that. Next slide. Hey guys, it's Naomi. And one of the activities that I recently saw. So the slide that you're gonna, um, so the short video. It's okay. Uh, the uh, video that you're going to see uh, in a minute is going to be just like one video of many videos that were created by the YAB um, for the the, uh, the coping webinar that they did last year. And so, what again, kind of a brainstorming of what are you what are you doing during the pandemic? What are some things that are keeping you healthy? And so they all came up with their their versions of that. And then, um, so what you're going to be seeing is just. Um, one short video of, of one young person. So let's take a look at that. Marsha, I think you're on mute. Yes, I am. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to have to pass on the video, unfortunately. Just um, we're just having a lot of problems with um, internet. Okay, so. Now we're gonna talk about methods. So at the end of the 10 months of the YAB program, participants completed a survey that included closed and open questions. The survey queried YAB members about their demographics, health behaviors, skill development, and program satisfaction. Okay, our second poll question. How valuable was community building for example, check-ins, warm-up, yeah, parties to you. This is going to be the poll question. What do you guys think? We want to know how, how valuable do you think our YAB um, found those different aspects? Right. Thank you, Adrian.
Sorry, it should be up now. I actually clicked the wrong one, but how valuable was community building? For example, check-ins, warm-ups, yeah, parties um, to you it should be up. And it will just wait for a bit. Um, again, the tip that we received earlier was if you go to the polls tab on the top right-hand corner, uh, you should be able to participate in the poll. But we'll wait a couple of minutes just because of a slight lag. Just gonna give it another 30 seconds, just in case anyone who can participate will participate. Again, if you go to the polls um, icon on the top right hand corner, you should be able to participate in it. Okay. So we have 63.6% .6 said extremely, 18.2% said quite a bit, 9.1% said moderately, and again, 9.1% said a little bit, 0% said not at all. Okay, our findings, what we found is that most, about 94% of the YAB members rated community building and a trusted adult membership, mentorship as quiet or extremely valuable aspects of YAB. Okay, our third poll question, how valuable, how valuable was the end of the YAB cycle honorarium? So the polls are live right now. Please go ahead and go to the polls icon to participate um, in answering the question. We'll wait another minute or so. Okay, so we have 44.4% said extremely, 22.2% said quite a bit, 33.3% said moderately, not at all, and a little bit have 0%. So what we found from this survey is a majority of YAB also reported improvements in health knowledge, 89%, and health navigation, 94%, and reported highly valuing the honorarium received at the end of the cycle, which was at 88%. Our fourth poll question, how many YAB members reported feeling proud from their involvement with the internship? Um, Juanita, just a quick question. Um, is that the same question as my involvement in YAP made me feel proud or is that a different question? Yes. Yes, okay. that Perfect. I'll enable it right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. 
it is live now. Again, please go to the polls icon on the top right hand corner to participate and then we'll give it a two or three minutes. Okay, so the results are extremely at 83.3%, quite a bit at 16.7%, and then the rest is 0%. Okay. All right, next slide. Okay, poll answer. All YAB members reported feeling proud that their perspectives were valued at 100%. Okay, participation quotes. Being a YAP, being in YAP really allowed me to come out of my shell. The second quote, I, I also think that my creative skills benefited because I don't use them as much as I would like. And YAP got me to use them for a good cause. So these are some quotes that were taken from um, the survey. All right, I'm gonna pass it on to Adrian. Thank you, Juanita. Um, so adding on from some other participant quotes, um, another participant said, I did a little more public speaking through Zoom, which taught me how to resolve problems fast and efficiently, as we're kind of seeing an example uh, here today in this workshop with some of our technical difficulties. You kind of have to think a little bit faster when you're doing things virtually. And so uh, this YAP yeah, participant brought that, that point up. Um, another participant said, I loved the YAB party nights because I felt as if I got to know the other YABbers better. So these are some of the themes that we saw over and over again from multiple participants, um, both the increasing in, in professional skills, but also finding opportunities to build a community and collaborate with other of their peers. So these were um, themes that came up over and over again in, in our open-ended questions. Um, so adding on to that, our findings um, from the survey were that 100% of the YAB members reported developing various skills um, in their qualitative responses. So again, those are the open-ended questions that we included in the survey. Um, so this, they indicated gaining cooperation and socialization skills. 100% said they gained confidence in communication skills, which included public speaking, graphic design, and advocacy skills as a result of their participation. So just as a reminder, what Marsha presented earlier in the presentation, um, communication is, was one of the um, areas of focus that they could choose. And even though perhaps not all of them were choosing to work on the communication side of things, all of them did um, report that they had an increase in communication skills. Um, the open-ended responses also indicated that they developed um, kind of what we might consider soft skills, right? So things like flexibility, empathy, and creativity. So again, these, um, these are the general themes that came up in the open-ended responses um, from the YAB participants. And we, when reviewing the, um, the data and we were analyzing those qualitative responses, the public speaking really stood out to us. Several people um, in their survey responses talked about uh, increasing their public speaking skills. And, and in our kind of informal conversation afterwards, um, Marcia and Juanita and I were, were talking about how the adolescent years, you know, during high school more or less, um, is a really critical time to develop your public speaking skills because uh, 
you know, it's, it, you have some opportunities in class, um, but it's still maybe not something that you have a ton of practice with. And there's not really a lot of opportunities outside of a school setting to um, practice public speaking. So having them um, have many opportunities in their participation in YAB to increase their public speaking skills, um, we saw something that's very valuable and we really appreciated that they named that in their survey, re survey responses. Um, so that could be something that we maybe hone in on a little bit more in future cycles. Um, let's see here. So some limitations of our survey. And so, um, you know, as folks from the research world, we do think it's critical to talk about what some of the limitations are for our methods. Um, and they're pretty straightforward. So the first is that all data were self-reported by YAB members. We didn't do like a pre and post quiz before or after, before and after their, um, the cycle to, you know, have some strict measures on like how much, you know, their knowledge increased or anything like that. Um, this, was, this was their experience, their report. Um, from themselves. So that's um, something to keep in mind when thinking about these these data. And then our results have limited generalizability. So again, these were surveys uh, that we did with the Youth Action Board members in our group. And if someone were to use our survey um, for a different group, they would probably see some different results. Um, so something to keep in mind here. And uh, lastly, kind of to wrap it up with some conclusions before we open it to um, Q&A, is participation in the Youth Action Board using positive youth development principles can be an effective way for youth to develop community building and emotional skills, as well as improve health knowledge and health navigation. Um, so again, it's that balance of soft and hard skills, right? So having um, emotional skills while also increasing knowledge and skills. Youth participation in research should include community building, opportunities for skill development, and opportunities for personal growth. So if you're interested in um, starting up your own Youth Action Board or Youth Advisory Board, uh, feel free to ask questions in the, in the chat, but um, these, this would be the place where we would highly recommend starting. Sometimes a Youth Action Board or a Youth Advisory Board might have a specific focus. So in our case, it's um, mostly focused around vaping prevention. But even still, the foundation of YAB should really include that community building, opportunities for skill development, and opportunities for personal growth. Um, because if we establish that foundation, they're better able to communicate those health messages on the specific topics that we're talking about. Uh, like I said, in our case, it's vaping prevention. So uh, quality improvements in programming can in use or can enrich youth experience in future YAB program cycles. So we will be taking the feedback that we got from these um, survey results and incorporating that into future cycles. And I think that's where the, we end there. So, oops, no guessing. Um, so I think I'll uh, open it up for um, Q and A, and I'll invite Marsha and Juanita to come back on um, screen. And maybe while we wait for some questions to roll in, um, Marsha is the lead for the Youth Action Board. So I know, Marsha, if there was other um, observations or reflections that you wanted to share after we've um, presented all of the data. Yeah, so definitely one of the things that I want to say is that the, um, the quality improvement projects that, that we did, uh, anytime we do a, that type of a, a survey, you know, the hope is that we want to improve our program. And so that's exactly what uh, we did this year based on the um, the comments, the results from what the YAB said. So, for example, one of the things that they they said was that they wanted um, more community building. So another, so I mean, it's a party, but it's more of a way to engage in some type of a community activity um, via Zoom because that's the only way we can meet right now is through Zoom. And so we're doing one so that it's not so far apart, which is, that was one of the comments. I was like, okay, that's a, that's a good point for sure. And then the other thing that I, that I changed also was um, the number of meetings. Uh, so our meetings are held mostly on Saturdays. So the kind of like the big group meetings are all Saturdays, but we meet once or twice a month. Before we used to meet two or three times a month, but because everybody was gonna be back on site, um, we, you know, was thinking about well, what the what's it going to look like for them to be back in school and being, you know, reacclimated to the whole school environment. So kind of changed that a little bit. 
but in at the end of the day the um the amount of participation that we're talking about on a Saturday is really two hours. And then with the committee meetings, it is mostly done via email or we do short meetings based on people's availabilities and things like that. Uh, so those are the things that um, that we did some, some changes uh, right away to make sure that um, for one is to, um, well, we listen to what they have to say, but also I would like to be able to to, to keep our YAB and um, sustain our YAB. And so that's some, some of the things that we're doing. I'm curious to hear, um, so initially we did the uh, poll um, whether or not you had a YAB, and most of you all said that you do not have a YAB. So I was curious to hear if you're interested in establishing a YAB or having established a YAB and uh, you don't have one anymore or you know anything like that um, in terms of uh, for us to have a discussion of about that, I'd be happy to to um, hear what you have to say. And Marcia, I see that there's some questions um, in the Q and A tab, so I'll ask you the first one because um, I think you'll be the best to answer this. Um, but Nadia wants to know how did you recruit and build the Youth Action Board? Sure. So um, some of it, the yeah, I knew from when I worked at the clinic at Balboa High School, so I was there for 25 years, and so. We had a youth advisory board, and so some of them um, followed me to Stanford. There are some youth that have directly um, reached out to, um, to to Bonnie, the the PI. Uh, so we started small, and then the other way was that the youth invited their friends to be part of the YAB, and, and then over time it just it just um, grew. And the um, right now we have. 28 members, and we did a uh, did uh, applications did it through the um, the Instagram. Uh, most of it, I have to say, were really from friends. So really, starting at the school has been very successful for me. Uh, and then would and they, they kind of know what what it is that we need in terms of you know commitment. I mean, they see how hard they have to work. And so what I have found is that, that the youth will generally They'll recommend a friend, but they'll they want to make sure that the friend isn't going to, um, you know, not commit to the way that they should because they already know what the YAB is like. So you know that I appreciate a lot, and so that, that's generally what they do. Or sometimes their siblings or cousins that are part of the YAB as well. The um, right now we have several that are college students, and so because college is you know, very challenging. Uh, uh, what I did also that I changed is that I gave them the option to participate in the Saturday meetings um, once or twice um, for the duration of the year. Um, it's just to keep track via emails and things like that. Even with that, the, the college students have participated in the Saturday meetings so far. We've had uh, two Saturday meetings. We had a late start this year. We started in October. Um, so that's how we've, we've been building it. and. Um, Keeping up with the momentum, yeah. So we, I think, really trying to uh, establish the time and the day that they can meet is really critical. Um, otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to have a yab. I would also say that uh, making it fun and having the youth take on those um, leadership skills in terms of. Or what is it that they would like to see at the upcoming meeting? What kind of game can I play um, with my peers? Um, a community building game. So any, anything that we could do that's that's fun, um, I think that that you know is that is a big help. The, the, um, I think in, especially in the beginning, like right now, I'm just thinking about like the, we have so many new people, and uh, we only have a couple more meetings until until December. We only have two more. And so we really want to be able to establish this feeling of safety. So being feeling safe, being safe to be able to, to talk about the whatever it is that's going on at their schools or with their with their peers is a, is a big plus. So I think starting it with you know safety and also making it um, fun and um, yeah, so I, you know what was, they're there for the cause and so I think that that's really great. Um, so I think that's also what keeps them, um, yeah, um, keep, keeps them coming back to to our meetings. And 
yeah, so I just do a lot of, I, I do a lot of theater games, um, so a lot of theater warm-up games. So anything that um, that we, either doing things that I that I have found online or things that I used to use when um, I used to do a lot of theater um, in person. So that's some ways that um, I do uh, virtual games with them. I think it's just really honestly giving them the space to speak and and really share like what's really happening and what they're seeing happening to their peers is um, is a great way to start establishing that relationship with them. I'll read uh, Laura's question. Um, for the youth who participated initially, what has their leadership trajectory been? Have they been able to take on greater leadership roles and how have they been supported as they've grown to take on new opportunities? Thank you for the question. That's a really great question. So one of the, one of the uh, is um, I, I have sort of, she's been really fantastic with anything that has to do with social media. And so I, I asked her if she would be interested in kind of being the kind of like the committee co-leader with another young person, and and that has really taken off really well. It, that in terms of support, it's just um, you know, checking in with them and just seeing how how is it going. Is um, is um, there anything I can do to to make it easy you know easier for you? So one. Um, I think doing having it's, you kind of like see like this natural ability, and that they like doing it, and so it's just kind of asking them. Well, I would, you know, this is something that I'm thinking about. What do you think? Would you like to take that on? Um, there's this other person also within the communications um, committee that she is the trivia Thursday person, and so she was asking for support, and so having new people that are in app that are interested in learning more. So now she has like a, a small group of people that are interested in doing that. So I think that that's, um, th those are some examples that I could think of right now that, that we we have seen that um, development. Um, I would also say, I just thought of another person that um, who's really involved with advocacy, who uh, recently became the one of the youth advocates of the year, very involved with um, advocacy, something that he was very involved with even before yeah. So some of them already have the, a skill set, but it just really blossoms when they're um, with us. And um, that's something that, um, you know, we could offer in terms of, uh, you know, youth, youth um, especially young youth are unable to work. Uh, so when they're part of an internship, you know, we talked earlier about providing them with an honorarium, but also providing them with the, the opportunities to um, have professional development, so be it that they go to training, or we support them with um, writing letter of recommendations for a job and also for schools. So those are some ways that we can support our young people. And if I can add on to that, Marsha, um, you mentioned it briefly during the presentation, but there have also been opportunities for the Youth Action Board members to um, kind of participate more actively in um, our research efforts that we're doing within our lab. Um, so the three of us are also working on a separate project where we wrote into the grant that um, Youth Action Board members will participate um, in survey development, in focus group question development, in um, participant recruitment, and uh, depending on how things go logistically, also um, moderating focus groups or interviews. Um, so those are, those are, it's kind of a new area within, within research uh, to have young people actively participate as researchers on a project. Um, and so that wasn't initially something that was kind of written into YAB. Um, they, have, they have been truly advisory board level for some of our research projects, but this will be the first opportunity for them to participate as researchers. Um, and the youth who kind of join onto this particular project um, had already expressed either to Marsha or to people within the lab what some of their their interests were and some of the things that they were curious about. Um, so that was a, a new opportunity, a new leadership opportunity for those who are more interested in the research side of things. Um, it sounds like there's some who are more into communication and, and event planning and that sort of thing, but there is a subsection who are very, very curious and want to have their research questions answered. So that's a really exciting um, 
new avenue that we're trying to build out as a as a potential leadership role. And as you can imagine, if you're um, you know looking for a new job or you know for their first job or or applying to college or other internships, having that experience as um, you know student researchers is is huge. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Juanita or Marta. Yeah, just to add on to that, I mean, just if you're on the fence of like how to start a youth action board or youth advisory board, if you don't know how involved you want to get with that, I think it's so important to have that because when you have youth that contribute, you can directly speak to youth. And I think at least from working here for a short period of time, I just started this year, um, I really like the fact that you can talk to youth directly about their thoughts and their perspectives, especially if you're making content and tools for you. Um, it's really good to talk to you to talk uh, to ask them what is their perspective so that you are you know meeting their needs um in the right way so i really think like if you are making tools or content for you it's important or it's and i think it's very impactful to have you a uh, perspectives valued and highlighted And then I have a question myself. So I know um, the YAB at, at Stanford site, like, you know, there's a lot of things going on. They participate. They're given the amazing opportunity to participate um, uh, as one of like your researchers and also giving their feedback on like surveys and things like that. And also being part of like social media campaigns and like um, holding their own workshops. But like what other like projects do they like get involved in or like are they a part of or are they thinking of right now like just things like that and like um how have you guys been supporting that well we we've done uh, over the summer we just finished the having the youth action board help us with the healthy futures um, and marcia uh, showed us live where they were talking about like asian targeting with uh, using vape products. Um, and that was really nice to meet with youth. Every like Thursday, we met with them and have their perspectives on um, how we can create content that can reach youth who are feeling targeted um, by big tobacco companies. And it was really fun to talk to them about different things about environment, youth, uh, youth targeting, um, even racial justice. And it was just like a fresh perspective. Um, but I'm not sure um, if Marsha and Adrian have anything to add on to that. Well, I, I definitely th thank you, Juanita. I think that that's um, definitely one of the ways that we've that we've been able to do that. And I would also say, in terms of um, like what is it that they want to work on for the for the next year, it's um, it's too early to tell with this group because we just started meeting. But um, the way it's um, evolved is that every every cycle, every every time we have a, a yab, that just kind of getting to know a little bit more about what their interests are. And then that's how this project, that webinar, that's how that um, develops at the end. And I'm thinking that, especially with the grant that we were talking about, that there that might be an avenue where we're going to be maybe focusing on a, in terms of a, some type of a webinar. Um, but I don't know. We'll have to see what um, what, what happens um, in the next couple of weeks, get to know them a little bit. A little more so it really is about getting to know them a little more and and seeing like wh where are we going to go with this it would be great if in the chat um folks who are interested in starting up a youth action board what are some of the challenges that you're anticipating or some of the barriers that you're facing in trying to get uh, a youth action board or youth advisory board up and going uh, you can feel free to add that to the chat or into the q a tab um but the, the previous question from Tracy, Marcia, made me think about um, some of the survey responses about activities that youth did not want to do on the next cycle, which was just as interesting, right, as what they wanted to continue doing. Um, so I don't know if you want to make any comments about kind of listening to both the positive and the like more maybe critical feedback. Yeah, I mean, so I'll tell you one thing that they did not like doing or they didn't want us to do again was um, we tried something new. Uh, we tried to do a book club. So that was an idea that one of the YAB had. And we tried to do it on like an online book club. And it, it was just really difficult to get going. And it was something that they um, tried to do over the summer. So we kind of like let that go. Uh, and, and they wanted definitely to, to let that part go. Then um, I would say like the the frequencies of the meetings. So there was like 
so they were feeling a little bit overwhelmed with, with so many meetings. So that was something that you know we cha you know, I changed right away for for this coming um, year and still being able to. I, I feel that doing something like that also is going to be okay because we're going to be able to have um, email communication. So that's the thing is that we we want to establish um, sort of like well, what are the uh, kind of like what are the, uh, the agreements that we have for this program? And and as long as you can keep up with the emails, you know things like that, that we'll be able to to con you know continue doing the, the various projects that we're doing. So having really good communication um, with um, the, the app is really important. I haven't seen anybody answered um, what the challenge is. I haven't seen any come in in the chat. Have you guys seen anything? No. Okay. Um, maybe, um, Marsha, we could talk about like the, the, the transitions that you had to make from being a YAP program and turning it into an internship because I think that sometimes, you know, the back end is kind of like the challenging part, just kind of like the logistics part. Sometimes we don't, you know, we think like, okay, how we're going to meet with the youth and how we're going to keep engaged. And we think that might be the challenge, but sometimes it's the back end. Do you want to share a little bit how you had to transition the YAP program into an internship and kind of how that, you know, how involved was that? So depending on, on your agency and how you want to um, establish a, a youth action board or a youth advisory board, um, it could be, there could be many layers of administrative administrative layers. Um, and so if an internship was taking it to a, a totally different level. For one thing, it's going to make the program better because we have um, just the fact that it's an internship, it, it, it'll help um, it'll help the, the youth in terms of their their um, professional development through their future careers and things like that. Um, but there, there definitely was uh, a lot of uh, unanticipated uh, administrative things that I had to take care of, and there were other people that were involved that um, part of, um, you know, through, through Stanford that um, we were, um, we didn't realize, you know, we just were not prepared for that. And so a lot of that took um, time to develop the internship program, but also the start time and things like that. So there was, there was like a lot of that going on. Um, but you know, we got it going, so that's um, so that's been great. And we've um, my concern was that I was, you know, that I was going to um, lose people because they had established that they wanted to be in Yav, and and um, there was like a major lag about a month, but um, was able to kind of keep them up to date, and and um, so we we had we had a good interest, and so we 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 had one person who who um, dropped out. Um, but for the most part, everybody continued. But yeah, there are those those types of challenges, and you really do need to have a, a person that's um, that's dedicated. But you also need the um, the support from the staff. If they weren't for the for the fact that you know my my colleagues support me and the lab, you know, it would be really difficult to run a, a youth action board. It was the same thing when I worked at the clinic, making sure that you know the staff supports you and uh, you know the clinic director. Uh, otherwise, it's really difficult to be able to run a board. Right. That, that actually goes into the point that Laura says, I think the big challenge is getting other adults on board with valuing youth voice. It can lessen the impact. Yeah, the, the um, it definitely. And I would and I would also say, too, that um, it's, it's sort of trying to get them to to get that adult buy-in really to, so that they can see that it really it really does make a difference in the even in the quality of the work that you do i mean it it just makes the having youth work with you just, it just makes it joyful i mean it's, it's a joy to be working with young people and not only that but it just really makes your work so much better you know it just makes it it just makes um makes it makes it for a better work environment for everybody um so it's it's coming up with a plan and, and sort of like what is the what is the role of the SIAP? What is the role of the adult that will be over you know kind of like supervising their activity? So just being very clear about like what are what are your um, what's the intention of this YAP? What are they going to do? And who are the who are the adults that are going to be involved? And just be really clear with the roles that they're going to play. That might be one way to go.
And one thing I'll add to that, Laura, about um, having other adults get on board is um, it's always okay to start small and do something really well. And I think the evidence, you know, that um, youth voice is powerful will kind of speak for itself. Um, so maybe that could be an approach also that you take is, uh, you know, let it let let things start slow um, and build. And as things build, um, it it kind of becomes undeniable, you know, the the power that youth voice can um, can have in, in whatever it is that you're, uh, you know, whatever organization you're working in or, you know, whatever structure you're working in. Because um, for, for us, I know Marsha kind of was able to get things going, um, you know, maybe relatively quickly by, by some people's standards. But within the lab, it was just immediately apparent how how valuable it was to have youth speak for themselves. And instead of us trying to guess um, what their needs are and how to meet those needs. Um, so I think it, you know, it kind of becomes undeniable at some point. What other questions do you have for us? I have another question. So um, I know you said right now there's 28 YAP members. Is that correct? Yeah. Around 28? That's right. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, do you guys like have any like returning YAP members or like how how is it like structured for like you guys? Is it like a one year kind of internship kind of thing or like how is it done? So they so actually the um, because now we're an internship, they have to be um, undergrads and below, um, and then there's like an age restriction. So, for so so we have um, so our age restriction is that they can't be younger than 14, and so they um, also have to they cannot be college graduates. So we actually we actually did have one person that did age out. Um, because um, that person was already a college graduate. Um, but then uh, we also had a, well, thankfully, we had a, a youth that was a middle school youth, um, but she um, she became um, a 14 year old, so she was okay. So that's, that's um, those are the kinds of things that, um, that, that they have like a, an impact. But for the grand majority, is the way, um, I mean, we've kept all of our, yeah, um, I think also kind of like, especially for the ones that are, so right now I have all these seniors. And so I'm already thinking about what's gonna look like for next year. So for next year, it might be for all the ones that are in college, whether they wanna continue and have, having them have more of like a, a more of a, um, I don't wanna say an as needed basis, but it's something to that effect where they, they still wanna participate, but maybe they can't, they can't do all those meetings. So then it'll be, or they're, they're only, Maybe doing two, you know, two meetings a year, or they, they participate as much as, as they can, um, because a lot of them do want it to continue. So I don't have a so I don't have just nothing about where we're saying you know after a year you can't be in the app. It's mostly what um, uh, has to do more with um, graduation and also their age um, for our our program. That sounds great. Thank I, you for answering my question. Yeah, sure. Are there any other questions we might have? I'm giving space for that. If not, that's totally okay too. If you have any questions that come along after this workshop, um, feel free to contact these amazing presenters. You can reach them at their website. Um, it'd be great if someone could put it in the chat as well, just in case, please. But I do want to mention, um, of course, if you have any last minute questions, please put in the Q&A tab or in the chat. It's fine either way. But in the meantime, I want to thank, you know, um, Adrian, Juanita, Marsha for your amazing presentation. Thank you for answering all these questions as well. It has been an honor for me to moderate. I feel like you guys have been moderating most of the time, but thankful that you guys are taking initiative and also like providing the space for us to learn more about the YAP. Um, I also want to mention that I will put in the chat again the link to the survey. It is how you're going to get points, and it's also how we at CSHA know what to improve on. And each evaluation, which is a survey, um, is worth 50 points. Um, so if you submit that, you get a chance to win one of the raffle. Again, we have really cool prizes. So I highly encourage you all to um, 
participate and fill out the survey. Thank you, Adrian, for sending uh, in your information, the toolkit right there. Awesome. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we hope you enjoyed this workshop. And there's the link. We'll stay on for like another two or three minutes if there's any other last minute questions. Otherwise than that, thank you so much for participating, everyone.